Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we thank you for this time. We worship your name. We give you praise, Lord, our decrease and the increase. Give me the right articulation of words. Come and have your way. Lord, come and have your way. I worship you because you're awesome. I worship you because you're faithful. Let your will be done. Let your love prevail. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you so much for loving us. I give you praise, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, my Father. You're awesome in this place, Abba Father. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. I welcome those that you've chosen for such a time as this. The leaders and the friends to lead us. Thank you so much. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we believe and pray. Hello. Hello, how are you Joe? 
I'm humbled. Thank you for appreciating. Um, hope you had a good day with your family as you remember the birth of Christ. Wabuinza, wachitiwa. Uh, we are going to do the devotion first. I'm going to read very fast. Then I want us to share something about. There are two things. There is a present and a gift. I don't know whether people know the difference between the two. In line with. We'll, we'll study as the Lord leads. God has been so good in an amazing way I uh, God has been a friend who is reliable who is always there who has all the time I thank God for my father giving his life to Christ uh, to me Christmas Uh, Christmas, of course, when we are growing up, it's about, uh, yes, we go to church, they talk about the birth of Christ, but this year, for me, Christmas is different. I am looking at it in a different way. Many years, Christmas has been about us. It has been about us, uh, family time, they call it family time. But I found out that for Christ to be born again into our lives, it's about him sitting in our hearts. I have seen people showing love during this time, yet the whole year there is no love. Yet the Bible says that love is God. And without God, Christ can't be there. And it looks like we are living a hypocritic kind of lifestyle. How you send messages to people you haven't been talking to in months or in years. What is that called? The world, when sin came into the picture, we lost the word love. We actually use people. And when that happens... God is taken out of the picture. Why? We are in his image. There is something missing in our society, something missing in church. You know when things fail outside church, the church should have all the answers. The church, the idea of church was started by Christ. Without Christ, there is no church. It is not there. The word church doesn't exist. That's why in the Old Testament they never had the word church. It was never there. They had words like tabernacle. They, were, they had words like the temple. They used the words like holy of holies. The tent. It, it's in the New Testament where we will find the word church. We are done praying. Let me go straight to it. Uh, let me read through the devotion and uh, 
be done with it, then we look at the present and the gift. I want to see if we really understand. You know, we've gone to church, we've read the Bible several times, pastors have taught and taught and taught and taught. As in, we leave church and people say, Amen, preach, preacher, but in actual sense, whatever they've been teaching us, we've not practiced. We are just, it's like a ritual. It's like when I, after showering, I have to dress up. But we can have an option of not dressing up. So that's what church looks like. That we wake up every Sunday, it's a routine. It became a routine, it became a lifestyle. Like going to church became, it's more like, at some point it lost me. Because we don't practice what we are taught. It's because the teachers are not walking the talk. It is very absurd to teach your children certain things that you don't do. Christ is born. It is an irrefutable historic fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Through his physical birth, God revealed himself to all of humanity. He who was born in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago is still being born in the hearts and lives of people today. Unfortunately, Jesus has not sat in our hearts. Why? Our character is completely different. Our way of living is not glorifying God. We are doing things like we don't know Christ. When, so, when you find someone and they tell you they don't believe in the word love, that alone shows me that you don't know God. When I find someone choosing who to love, there are just no Christ has never been given birth to in your life. You just, it's a ritual that you're doing to celebrate Christmas. I, we're still looking at the tabernacle. In the New Testament, we are the tabernacle where God dwells. And this body, God created it in such a way that it looks like exactly the tabernacle Moses built in the Old Testament. And God used to sit in the Holy of Holies. He has a seat. And in the New Testament, your heart is the Holy of Holies. If the tabernacle in the Old Testament does not look like the church, then God cannot dwell there. The tabernacle was a sacred place. When, when you look at your body, because the tabernacle had a tent around, even our bodies, the clothes we wear, first of all we put something on top, then there is the body itself, then inside, this thing is covering inside where God sits. Unfortunately, our inside, God just checks. We've emphasized so much on God checking the heart, but God has not sat there. Jesus is God. In the Old Testament, they had God in three, where we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they all work hand in hand. You cannot remove one. They all have to be together. In the Old Testament, um... They did not know the Son, they did not know the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit was there as light. The Holy Spirit was there as light. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was there as light. Because the Bible says that he hovered, the Spirit of God hovered. That alone is just a confirmation that there was the Holy Spirit. He 
who was born in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago is still being born in the heart. He's born in the heart. You see, the heart is, is made of flesh. But inside there, God sits. That is, that is his intimate place with you. Your relationship. We put people in our hearts because we have an intimate relationship. Intimacy does not, the word intimacy, people don't understand the word intimacy. People attach intimacy to having sexual relationships. That intimacy part is a one-on-one. -on -one. I, I find it so weird how we, it is easy for people to put people in that sacred place, but they don't put God. You see, I've been seeing, I've seen a few pictures of people here and there. The way they dress up on Christmas and the way they dress up when they're going for parties is completely different. There are people, I have seen men, certain men in suits. But on Christmas, they are wearing a shirt and you think he's going to, to the market. I looked and I'm like, hey, why is it that you overdress for the other things when it comes to... You just see the, the way we approach certain things. The things of God we do, like Gadivengali, as in, it's not so important. Why someone works so hard over the weekend and on Saturday they go to the bar? They, like they have to be there, they purpose. When it comes to the day that God separated, God blessed the Sabbath. God separates. When God blesses, he has separated and he rests on that day for his purpose. It is because God does not sit in our hearts. As much as he checks the heart, he does not sit in our hearts for us to have that intimacy whereby we, we, we are like, I can't go to church late. I've seen people, you have an appointment, including myself, and you want to keep time. You don't want to miss this appointment. Why is it that we don't put the same energy in the things of God? Why do we bring God half-baked things? Why is it that when you have a function, a wedding, an introduction, um, these who go for runways, why is it that we dress to kill? When it comes to God, it is, you know. I'll see if I'll go to church. I got so tired last weekend. But you put in a lot of energy to go to the bar. Why is it that we don't put in energy to go and say thank you? To the one who looks over us. Because God has been so good. Our friends have died. It is because Christmas became a ritual. The meaning of, of Christmas. Very few people understand why Christ was born. There are things we are doing because we copy them. Because it's a ritual that was started by someone. I, I, told, I told people that I no longer, I don't want the world to think for me. I, I, I took over my power. I took it away from man. The world does not think for me. I don't want any worldly standards in my things. It's okay if I look like I'm behind. It is very okay. Why? When I allow God to take charge, I have peace. The Bible says that peace I give, not as the world gives. He gives peace that surpasses all understanding. I refuse to follow the human mindset, the human quotes. They became a bondage to us. And we are in a bubble. The, the sky is not a limit for me. I have to go till heaven. I have to go to the throne of thrones. The throne is not at the sky. But someone came and said, and used the, the sky is the limit. So when you hit the sky, then what? 
what next? You stop there. It is because we are living a half-baked kind of lifestyle. We don't want to stretch beyond. And we are using the worldly mindset. And it has limited God in a way that is so... It has limited God and we are so behind. When God blesses you, his blessing, no one can, can stop God. I have seen that happen in my life in an amazing way. In spite of uh, this simple but overwhelming truth is often lost in the chaos of our busy lives. In spite of the festivities around Christmas time, if you have not experienced the birth of Christ in your personal life, the things of God should be personal. It should stop. It. 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 I. When and when I. I. Th Okay, I've come from a family where I have known Christ all my life. But giving my life to Christ is 31 years. When I met seven, Tata made sure that we, we, we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts. Because at seven, a child understands that it is bad to abuse, it is bad to do this, to, it is bad. The child understands. If a two-year-old can abuse you here, kids are raised in such a way that immediately they give birth to a child, dress the child, they can start making the child to sit. A, a two-year-old can talk. A one-year-old can answer back depending on how you're raising your kids. And certain kids are faster than others. Some are very slow. Here you find a two-year-old when they're being carried from here and they're not covered in clothes. These people move with their babies. The only time you're going to see them covered maybe in a stroller. The kids are running around. I always meet the kids and they come with their parents and I'm like, no, 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 stop. And they're dee -dee 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 very tiny and some are talking depending on their environment so I take my things personal when it comes to my God it's a personal issue it's a personal issue because God has been there where man cannot be man I mean the human being Man is always busy. Man never has time for others. But man wants to be given time. Man has a selfish card. When it's not about them, they don't care. The only time they're going to care is when they have an issue. They have a business for you to run around with. They have a conference. That's all I have seen with man. I pay a lot of attention. It is not my fault that I'm a detailed person. I'm not summarized. And I had started hating the real me. And it was suffocating me. And in my whole life, it is now two months. One month and 25 days when I feel like it is me. I've never felt like me in my life. And the 31 years I have on my own knowing Christ, may I give my, my, I don't like counting the years because may I give my life to the Lord every day. I renew my vows. Because this body does not give its life to Christ. No. This body can want things. And if you're not careful, it will take you to hell. If you give power this body, you're going to be in trouble. This body This body can shout. So I'm like, since I am the one carrying you around with my bones, 
I am in charge. I choose who says what. I choose what to listen to. I choose. Back in the day, I used not to answer back. But I would ignore. You would talk to me and I'm looking at you straight. I was raised to, pay, to look at people straight in the eye when they're talking to me. But trust me, I block off. And when I don't focus, you won't get anything nice out. I can look at you, I'm hearing, but I'm not listening. I am a multitasker. I can multitask and do everything well. But when I purpose to do something, I excel beyond imagination. I am a kind of person who learns on job. I don't need, there are things I don't need to go to school to learn. I am a kind of person who learns on job. When I love something, I give it time. When I love you, I give you my personal time. And my personal time is my life. Time ain't money. Time is life. When you have the life, you make the money. We are struggling so much in life because we think time is money. And all your life you're working towards getting the money. And when you don't get that money, you get so disappointed. I, uh, I look at certain people. If they remove the money from the equation, they are going to die immediately. And also, because their life is controlled by money, I decided to give my life to Christ. It's a personal decision I made. I stopped knowing Christ because of my parents or any pastor. No. Because it gets complicated when you are alone. Man does not have time for you. Me, I can survive anywhere and I grow and I sprout. Because I took a personal decision. I can stand any wave. Because Christ became my foundation. Pastors are not my foundation. We are used to a mentality of calling the pastor to pray for you. You're going to be put in a position where you call people and they don't answer back. I've been in that position for seven years. Where pastors have no time. But they give other people time. You call someone and they see their call, but they don't reply. And the person is called a pastor. So I have reached, I thank God for the training I've gone through. I thank God for my parents. They've never hidden anything from us. We sit and discuss things. And I thank God for the family I come from. I am an exposed girl. But when people see you keeping quiet, they think only father. I've been silent for over 31 years. When people say things and I say, yeah, okay. Unless you ask me my opinion, I'm going to give it to you. If you don't ask, that's it. Because many times we've not been given um, the front seat. So life would move like that. And I had to wait for my time. My time started in 2015. And the devil saw that my time is now. The devil runs fast. But he did not know that I'm a girl who is rooted and grounded. I don't just celebrate Christmas. It's a personal deal. A relationship. An intimacy. A one-on-one. -on -one. In 2010, I gave my heart to the Lord 
on a big level. You see, we play with the mouth, we play with the words. When I speak, I proclaim, I declare. And when you choose to walk right with the Lord, God respects words from people who walk right with him. God gives you a first priority, what man does not do. Man will give you priority if you're their child. But if you're not their child, you don't talk. He talks more and louder. God gives us an opportunity to talk. And later he wants you to listen. That's why he gives us parents to teach us to listen and to talk. But if someone is not your parent, you don't have a right to talk. Whatever they say, you just accept. But that kills a heart. Because you don't know our heart's desires. That is why I chose. In 2010, I was like, I am giving my heart to the Lord because I am a poor custodian. I am a poor custodian. When man gets what they want, when they are done, they don't care. They'll just step on your heart and trash it the way they want. Man, human being, when I learned that, some people call it being called. No, I did not go called as was protecting the Holy of Holies where my God sits. My God does not only check, he sits. I started exercising that. Until the devil attacked again because he was seeing that I was running away. Because in 20, 2014, I made 30 years, and the devil knows number 30. And he's like, I am seeing you going to a level of 32. Be careful with, with the odd, even numbers, even or odd numbers, even numbers. Careful with them. They mean something in the physical realm. Same with the odd numbers. You need to read the word of God and have a personal relationship where God sits and never leaves. What chases away God is your relationship and the things of the world. We serve a jealous God. He does not ch share space with anyone. So you're going to choose. In spite of the festivities around Christmas time, if you have not experienced the path of Christ in your personal life, you'll never know the true joy and peace of Christmas. Only Christ gives depth and peace to the joy of Christmas. The birth of Christ in Bethlehem is a mere historical factor, but nothing more than that until he is born in your life. Then you not only know Christmas, but also the Christ of Christmas. If you want to experience two Christmas joy, Christ must be born in your life. When his holiness permeates your life. It becomes a merry Christmas in the true sense of the word. Um, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod,
the King Herod the Great, Magi, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem asking, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? We, we read this. We read this last time. Get some time and sit and study. And understand why Christ was born. Let holiness should be part of your life. Whatever you guys are celebrating is a ritual, is a culture. But if holiness is not part of you, your inner ritual or a culture, until you get an intimacy, until you get an intimacy, the way you're relating with your wife, now with God it has to be on another level. The way you're relating with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, You need to give God his space. He does not share space with anyone. Because when you love God and have that intimacy, you're going to be able to love others. You'll, you'll never choose who to love. I always hear people, I love those who love me. You see, you're starting to use the scriptures the wrong way. You represent Christ. He came for sinners. He did not come for righteous people. Because they were not there anyway. The Bible only talks about the right. By the time Jesus came, there was no righteous person. Enoch died long time ago. In Genesis chapter chapter 5, Enoch is one man who walked with the habitually. No one has ever reached the righteousness of Enoch. Of course, Mary did not test death. Elijah did not test death. They were taken. But Enoch is one man talked about. He's one man who qualified. Whatever you've been celebrating for years. Because I see people, they choose who to love. And then they celebrate Christmas. Then I'm like. Because the worldly standard is telling us. Love only those who love you. That's what the world says. It is, it is like that because of the devil. He brings a mindset. He disconnects us. Because of sin. When one heart harbors the devil, it destroys love between people and you start fighting. Because I've been asking myself many questions, how someone wakes up and they throw you out of their life. They don't listen. They don't forgive. They don't recognize their own mistakes and they are celebrating Christmas. They cannot ask for forgiveness. Some cannot, cannot forgive. They choose who to love. And what is so embarrassing and disgusting is when you come from the same tree, the same bloodline. Because if you fail to work with your family members, you think you're going to work with people outside your family. It is the same attitude you're going to take outside. And whoever steps on you the wrong way, you write them off. The challenge is at the foundation. Is your foundation really Christ? You, I see people post scriptures, put scriptures here and there, but... Your character, your, real, your, your ways are not God's ways. Your ways are completely different. Some of you are doing good deeds for, for the camera, for 
you to be noticed, for you to be remembered. And I'm like, hmm. yeah, there are many things I don't understand. That's why I just look at people. And I, I sometimes I choose to keep quiet. Because when you misunderstand something, it's going to be a war. Because everyone is entitled to their opinion. Everyone is right in their opinion. But your presentation is poor. You see, be, I, I keep telling people, be careful with your words. Be careful with your presentation. Having an opportunity to have a microphone does not give you the right to say anything you want. Having money does not qualify you to be a speaker in public. You need to understand how do you talk to people who are hurting. Hurting, why are they hurting? They lost a loved one. How do you, how do you counsel this person? How do you comfort this person? Not everyone is a counselor. There are people who have gone to school and studied counseling and they have a PhD. But in actual sense, they're doing it for money. Because if you gave your life to Christ and you are a counselor, you should be having a personal relationship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit because he's a counselor. Most of you love rebuking, but you don't know how to present it. Yes, you've been talking for years, but when it comes to handling people, you don't know. We have released words that don't glorify God. And we've destroyed God's creation. I have cancelled people. I don't know how many. The young and the old. I have talked to 90 year olds. I have talked to 100 year olds. When God gives you certain things, it's a full package. And when everyone has certain things in their body, but some things have not yet been birthed, because your relationship, your intimacy with God is not there. You gave your life to Christ because you wanted a change in a lifestyle. Your reason for giving your life to Christ was never to have a relationship, an intimacy. It was about going abroad. It was about getting married. It was about having the power to be on top of things. You're like these people who get rich when they've been poor. The day that money walks out, you might want to be taken to your grave. What is a, what is a present and what is a gift? What do you understand by the word a gift? With the Oxford Languages Dictionary, it says, a thing given willingly to someone without payment And then number two, they're giving some, they're saying a natural ability or talent. They're giving an example of he has a gift for comedy. Um, similar words, present, donation, offering, contribution, handout, presentation. This is the man's way of understanding it. Let me put in the word present. Present 
it can mean adjective in a particular place it's like your appearance your presence around when you're there it's for now it's for now when someone says I have your present it's for now then when I tell you I have a gift then I'm going to come and present it it can come anytime your present has to be now from the word present you get presence then you get presentation when I gift you something when I give you it can come today tomorrow or the other day it ha it, it's for a lifetime a gift is for a lifetime a present is not a for a lifetime it's for now Jesus is not a present. Jesus is a gift. And he was given presents. A human being can be a gift. God showed us that through giving us Christ. And inside him, everything was there. God was humbling himself. To come in a form of a human being which starts with a baby God was showing us a form because in the Old Testament in the Old Testament they did not uh, in the Old Testament we see a lot of old people And the children were wearing shoes of old people. And every time you wore a shoe like this, the word they don't use child. They either use prophet, king, or judge. The children they talk about in the Old Testament were kings, judges, or prophets. That does not show any sign of a child. Hope we are getting each other. And that brought respect. Samuel was a child. But God chose him at that tender age. Because God wants. God does not parent. He owns the body. And Samuel was a gift. Moses was a gift. Moses is being, being given birth to was a gift to Israel. Same with Joseph. Joseph came after seven children. And when Joseph came, they left the house of Laban. His presence shifted an environment. A child who is a gift, their presence changes the environment. They are for a purpose. Because a gift has to run. A present is for now. There are children we have and God sent them on earth to change an environment. That's why I told parents, pay attention to your child. I told you a firstborn and a lastborn are not yours. They're not yours. They belong to God. The middle children are yours. And the last born most of the times comes when a parent is tired and they're like, I want out. When I'm done with this one, I'm not going back there. And most of the times the last bones are ignored. But last borns are keys. In my local language, they call the first born a door opener. And the last born is a door closer. Omugulanda no mugalanda. 
the opener and the closer. Why was God coming down, humbling himself to come in a form of a child? It is because children are pure. God works with purity. God works with purity. That is why every child has a parent to raise and nurture the purity inside. That is why when kids are still in the wing, you know the devil fears a child when the child is in the mother's womb. Because the child has a cover. There is that warmth. It's a present. It's a gift. It's not a present. That is why when you know that someone is pregnant, then you look for a present and you come and present it. But its presentation matters. How do you wrap your present? People love gifts more than presents. Did you know that? Because a gift is a thought that lasts for a long time. A gift is more of a surprise. A present is not a surprise. Jesus was a surprise for the world because it was to bring change. And in Jesus, because he's a gift, through him, gifts are given birth to. But he had to first die. Open your Bibles in the book of Isaiah. So meaning, if you don't allow Christ to sit in your heart, and you don't just sing about it, Feliz Navidad, what is the meaning of that song? I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Sometimes I don't want to lie to you. I've heard that song all my life, but it's so boring. It doesn't bring the real meaning of the day. You know when they give birth to a baby, they all ask, they're all waiting. When is Esther giving birth? She gave birth. They always ask you, do you want to know the sex of your child? You know, every child is a gift from God. They don't say every child is a present. Because they are precious to God. They are for a purpose. But who nurtures the purpose? The parent. Meaning, as a parent, you have to have an intimate relationship with God for you to be able to nurture something you don't know. You learn to be a parent through your firstborn. And I told you a child comes in two ways. When a child is given birth to a family, is established. A complete cycle is established. That is why you see people who have not given birth, they look for a replacement. Either they adopt or they are going to get a cat or a dog to complete the circle. The devil has done that also. He loves having children because there is power in a family. A family builds a nation. Read Genesis 12 and you'll understand what I mean when I talk about the word family. 
and it, a family is made up of a man and a woman and a child. That is the complete circle. That is why people are after each other telling you, Aha, Esther, I'm not going to do that. Because that child is a gift that lasts. It takes you to the next level. It changes what you failed. It brings a change. You're breathing, but what change have you brought? You were once a child. You know, sometimes I look at people who are old in age. They keep forgetting that they were once children. That is why I told you, men, if you're getting marrying a girl, before you marry her, before you take her to your bed, there are principles, there are steps. You don't just take someone to your bed. Girls, you don't just allow to open your legs for anyone you find. You're going to sleep with a devil. You don't know whose child he is. How dare you take him to your bed? How dare you open a door? When I was growing up, they say when someone knocks, before you open the door, ask, who is that? When you're answering a phone, it is, you, if you don't know the number, you pick and say, hello, Esther speaking, who am I talking to, please? Because I found out that human beings are selfish, I pick the phone. When I don't know the number, I pick my phone. Keep quiet for a minute to see whether the other person on the other side has etiquette. If they don't have any etiquette, cause me I have monitoring spirits that walk with people. All they need is a contact of my voice. The devil works in very mysterious things. I listen. Then when I see that there is no answer, I say, hello? Who am I talking to? Because you're the one who has called me. Before I open a door, a can of worms that I might not be able to shut. It is easy to fight someone outside, not inside. I, to I used to tell some people when I was at the university and uh, I'm not looking that bad. And people want me to move up with them. And I'm like, There are things I don't do. I don't compromise myself. When you meet me, but before you even tell me that you love me or you like me, whatever, I've already seen it in your eyes. So whatever you're going to tell me, I can always tell men you don't know how to hide. That part God did not give it to you. Because you're the ones who ask girls out. The Bible says, he who finds a wife, not the other way around. The worldly standard says, Esther, you can ask that man out. If he has failed and he's taking too long, you can take the first step. When I do that, that means my foundation with that man, it will always be like that. He cannot take up the space of being a man. To be a man enough to tell me, Esther, I love you. Can we get a cup of coffee? Now some come in at Evatoa order. And I'm like, who told you that I really want to go out with you? Sorry, I'm picky. Because I know what I want. I'm a girl who has grown up around men. So I know what I want. I don't want to live a life of regret. I told you I want, even if I cook only one year, but when I'm happy, when my partner understands the theory of marriage, it's an institution started by God, not man.
that you're only going to understand if you're the type who reads the word of God, who gets time, an intimate moment. You're not the one who created the time. That is why God is out of the time zone. In Genesis, it is a. Uh, it was God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they had a meeting, the three of them. And they created man. And when they were creating man, it was an intimate moment. God took all his time. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. Who do you see in that mirror? Who do you see in that mirror? When you look at in the, when you look in the mirror, who do you see? When the devil defigured me, I hated the mirror. The devil was stealing my image. My identity was taken for thirty one years. Now the devil saw that God is taking over in an amazing way because the reason as to why I was created was starting to get out on a big level because I was tired of certain things. In 2014, I told myself, no more sleeping in the bed when the blessing I was told that I have is being taken by others. It is time. I needed to find out why I'm in the same position. I've been through deliverance almost all my life. Because me, I was taken to, they used to call, he's still there, brother God. He's the first person who first witnessed what was disturbing me. And he prayed. The prophetic has not just started. The prophetic back in the day was respected. And the men and women who carried the prophetic. Loved God. They had a special intimacy. Back in the day, the fear of God. Let us read. I am going ahead over myself. Isaiah 11. Chapter 1, then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse, David's father. Do you have a father? Do you know that you are a shoot? Let me take you into farming. You know, I told the farmers some things, and uh, they thought they were more wise, and in the season, People have made more losses in farming than never before. You don't command the environment and you think you can survive with farming. I've done farming with my mother. My mother, the best thing she knows most, because she never completed school, God gifted her. She has gifted hands when it comes to farming. You know, when you, when you love people, you understand them, you respect them, you value them. That can only happen if Jesus is in your heart. But because the worldly standard, it's about the money. When someone finds a, a homeless person, the homeless person stinks because, you know, they don't really shower every day. They're walking with their clothes in the bag. I have a friend. There was a season when he was showering from Starbucks. And I had to stick by him through it all. It wasn't easy. 
and I had to do it on a long distance level. But because I had Christ in my heart, I did not go over my nose to say this person is lying. I did not. Me, I don't care whether you steal your money. My money belongs to God. I am just the source of great be to others. Because he blessed me to be a source. It was for his work, for his purpose. You know, many people think they can manipulate me. I just look, keep quiet and look at you. Because you don't know exactly what you have. You first lose it and you see its value. Because I come from a home where the man who gave his life to Christ, he purposed, he got a personal relationship. And when he got that personal relationship, he joined the family. The tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse. Words were used to cut him off the other side. And he was told, you're on your own. They did not, they did it because they did not know Christ. They knew God. But having a personal relationship was not part of their jurisdiction. Unfortunately, they're not here to see what he did because what he did was on behalf of the family because he comes from that root. And now when you go around family, they understand who Christ is as much as some are not yet rooted and grounded. But each house has someone who has given their life to Christ. Because of my father. You also have someone in the family. Who can change. And bring change in the family. Because when you don't understand those things. On a layman's language. Or term or basis. When it comes to the word of God. You won't understand a thing. That is why God. Made us see the things here. For us to be able to understand what's in heaven. When man sinned, he lost. And God had to change the equation to, so that man fits in his own equation. Because God does not work with sin. That is why when he sinned, God closed the door of the Garden of Eden where the tree of life was. And God walked with man, but now this time round, he was using prophets, judges, kings, to see how to bring back man to himself, because the devil took him away. So God started to, he, he, he's the author. He's the one who made the equation he knows the missing link the value of x and jesus was used as the value of x to solve the equation and in revelations you go back into the garden of eden to the tree of life you get access that's what a gift brings a gift gives you access back into the holy of holies Isaiah 11, then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse. Then a shoot, when you see um, a banana plant, it has a shoot. I told you we are like trees. Luganda, 
you know it's very challenging to be coming from a tribe and you don't really understand apart from speaking the language so that you can fit in I found out you are a Muganda who does not read the word of God so you don't understand your own culture you're being made to do things and you don't ask questions they got the culture of Buganda from the Bible, but they flipped it because they wanted to be gods. That side is not God. That side is for the devil. They wanted to be gods, to rule. That's why they were so annoyed when the white man came. To bring the real deal. These ones are having a photocopy of the real deal. And God used the white man to bring the real deal that you don't want. And you say we want our tradition. Your tradition came from the same Bible you don't read. It is in the family of Jacob where they got their things. And they met them to fit them, to fit their own cycle. So that they can own their own thing. Man has always wanted to own the thing. Yet you lost it when you sinned. So from today onwards, just know whenever you sin, you lose the power. You're giving your power to somebody else to take charge. Then a shoot, the Messiah will spring from the stalk of Jesse, David's father, the branch, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. It starts with a seed, and it brings a shoot, and it sprouts, and gets a stalk. A stalk connects the root and the upper part of the tree. Did you know that the people you work with are just part of the tree? There are people in your lives who are supposed to bring nutrients. Did you know that? Some of your friends are leaves. Some of your friends are in the roots. Some of your friends are a shoot. You have branches. Whenever they feel like they are done, they cut the branch. They are like, I need some water. You know leaves get water from the roots, right? After getting what they want, they walk out. The leaves fall off and you dry up. And it's a seasonal thing. You need to understand your times and seasons. You don't know the times and the seasons. That's why you're hating everything around you. Because someone betrayed you. Because you did not understand the times and the seasons. You don't read the Bible. That's what the devil does to destroy man. Because your life is always in a compromising situation. Because you're using the worldly standards. You look for scriptures that support what your body wants. You want a tattoo? You can't use Isaiah 49. The hands, the palms are for God, not mine. I have seen someone trying to concoct something to have dreads. This is anointing. The dreads you have that was a prisoner's lifestyle. They spent many years on water. They could not cut their hair or wash it. That rolls the hair. Because you're not combing it. You're not bathing it. 
it rolls. The design of the dreads. Someone got the idea from slave trade. Then they started to make oil that can make the hair glue. Wisdom. And a branch from his roots will bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and strength. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. But the fear of the Lord is the reverential and obedient. Those came with him inside those are gifts of the Holy Spirit they came with him without him you don't have them I know you've read about the seven gifts when you have Christ you're gonna get wisdom you're gonna get understanding I have seen people saying that I don't need to understand anything and I'm like, do you really read the Bible? You're celebrating Christmas. They gave birth to a baby who is a gift to bring change. From being a baby, he brought restoration. He was used as a sacrifice for sin. Atonement. Because in the Old Testament, they used to use animals, the blood of animals. That is why you see, the witch doctors tell you to look for a baby, and they want some ba a baby who has no hole. They tell you to get a child who is a virgin. Why do they say that? One time my sister was going to be sacrificed. Do you know what saved her? <laughs> God marked my sister. No one can touch her. She's a child who was given birth to with a mark. Which is so evident. And someone made a comment about it which was not nice. God used that mark for my sister not to be sacrificed. We were in primary school. Between, she was in between P1, P2. And when they hold, when the man held her, he happened to pick the part that had the mark. And he got scared. He's like, this is a special child. That's why when we're in school, a parent used their child to cut my sister's hair. When we were growing up, we never went to the barber. Mama used a comb and a razor blade for all of us, including my father. My father started using a, going to the saloon in the 2000s. When his friend, who became a brother, would pick him up and take him to the saloon to cut his hair. But my whole life of seeing my parents together, Tata would sit on a seat and they used that. Do you know why? Tata is an engineer. He calculates the amount of power that will go on a child's head. Because it brings 
effects whereby the repercussions will be seen when the child is old in age. When Tata told us we don't plate the hair, I did not quarrel about it. I needed to understand him. I had to wait and get the reasons as to why. I am a child who never answered back to my dad, but he raised me to ask questions when I don't understand, and we discuss issues, so that when I am obeying the rules and regulations, I know what I am doing. And that has become a problem to other people, because that's not a culture in their houses, and because most of them, they did not grow up with Christ in the house. Many people have given their lives to Christ when they're old in age. So they don't understand the principles. They just read the Bible to become rich, to go abroad, to get married. Every time you preach, it's about getting, 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 getting. When are you giving back? When you have Christ, you have everything. Because you did not understand the gift. That is why your life is a struggle throughout. Even to be zero. And you're using your tongue to say that. Why not them get so difficult? You don't have a backup plan. You don't have a route. You're not grounded. Everything that comes just takes you. That's why I see people in business. This season you see everyone is selling bugs. Before you know it, every one is doing makeup. Eh, you're like, eh. Then I sit and I'm like, okay, I'm seeing. I'm seeing everyone doing makeup. Some of them use YouTube channels to learn to do things. Then they come and do anything on you. Let me tell you something. I don't give my face to everyone. In my whole life, I've been a maid once. They cut my eyebrows in 96. And I did not like it. I was like, couldn't they just comb it, white cut it? I did not get to that point. And the other person who has done makeup, there is a lady called Rachel. She left me on my natural level. She enhanced my beauty that was inside. Because it was already there. Makeup does not bring beauty. If you don't have it, you don't have it. That is why some of you put too much. Because you were not raised by parents who said you're beautiful. Towera. That is why you find it so odd to move without nothing. That is why Kakala Koto Kangala. Because we were your kula. Your father did not say, Esther, you're beautiful. Now it's other men telling you, and you start running, running around like a headless chicken. Parents, assure your child. You have a gift in the house which you have neglected, you've ignored. You say, ah. My friend, read your Bible. Because if you neglect that child, the world is going to teach them touch. We've se you've seen our friends who, have not been, who are not raised by parents, even the way they talk. You know. They struggle so much. Everything is about the money. And I hear the mothers of the nation saying, Bam, they are hard working. And in my mind, I'm like, if you understand the concept of a gift, you'll be fine.
when Christ is given birth in your life and sits in your heart, the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon you too. And you're going to get gifts like the Spirit of Wisdom understanding so before you open your mouth you know some of you open the mouth simply because you're the big in age you're the celebrity you work on tv you work on radio you know you have the microphone you know that that to some people that they think that gives them the power to talk and by the time you open your mouth like this Make sure you brush your teeth with the Holy Spirit. In other words, make sure the gift is inside you. So that when you open your mouth like this, you declare peace, love. Now which love are you going to declare when you don't have it? Wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength. You don't have the counselor inside. The gift to counsel, you don't have it. You don't have it. I don't need to go to school to be a counselor. It was already inside. And it's in Mengo where I became a counselor. In senior one and senior two. But it needed to be nurtured, trained. It was always there. Leadership has been in my blood. Cause a message came. When your relationship and intimacy with God is not tampered with, God is going to talk to you on a personal level. You don't need a pastor. He uses them because he's the one who put them there to perfect the church. And they're supposed to give accountability. I am the church. And it only happened after Jesus came and died and sent a representative. You'll get strength. The spirit of knowledge will come upon you. And every word you release like this, it is just word of knowledge. But for you just release the word because they told you you would be a prophet. That is why the Bible says that in a multitude of words, sin occurs, right? Because you're not using the spirit of God to speak. You don't have the gift. You celebrate the gift, but you don't have it inside. Those things are different. It, for you, it's about the get-together, the family, the food. It's a culture, a ritual you're following. You don't have a personal, intimate relationship. Yes, I know you gave your life to Christ, but you've not allowed Christ to sit in your heart. Because the way your character looks like. Your character just shows your level with the Lord. That means your, your birthday is not a gift. You are a present. Spirit of knowledge and of reverence and of the fear of the Lord. But the fear, the word fear of the Lord has obedience in it. Reverential. I'm using an amplified Bible. When you have the fear of God, there is obedience. Because Christ is seated inside you. He's a gift.
Because when you realize and recognize, you get. And you will see. He will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his, his eyes see. Nor make decisions by what his ears hear. But with righteousness and justice, he will judge the poor. And decide with fairness for the downtrodden of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. Now when I hear someone telling me that words don't kill, I'm like, that is why I, now I choose to keep quiet because pastors say they disrespect them because they never want to be challenged. They've never seen a girl, a child, who is not ordained by anyone, who has never been to a Bible college, a child whose father they don't know. Because it's about mana one. Whose child are you? Before you start asking such questions, ask the Holy Spirit before you make a mistake of your life. With anyone, God sends me your car. God chooses people for you to meet. Ask God, why do I meet people? And who did I meet? And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips... He shall slay the wicked. And righteousness will be the belt around his lions. And faithfulness the belt around his waist. That is baby Jesus that you are celebrating today. And when you celebrate him. You need to put him in your heart so that you partake of what I have just read. Before you say anything, you will have wisdom. What is wisdom? Proverbs chapter 1. You need the gifts. You just teach the gifts. But they've never manifested in your own life. Because the word is not part of your dress code. You only get the word, read it when you're going to teach others. You only get the word when you want a visa. You only get the word when you want a wife. When you get the word when you're sick. You Basically, we are just using the word as a doormat. As an ATM machine. Without it, you won't withdraw money. But you, I know you can go to the counter. For you to access a vault, you have to have a key for a deposit box. If you close the door, you're the one with the keys. God is not going to force himself inside. You used sin to shut the door and locked yourself inside and you left the key outside. Proverbs chapter 1 and verses 7. The reverent fear of the Lord that is worshipping him and regarding him as truly awesome is the beginning and premient part of knowledge. 
its starting point and its incense. But arrogant fools despise skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. Who wrote the book of Proverbs? King Solomon. You got to celebrate Jesus when you have not read the book of Proverbs. It's just a ritual to you. Because if you have wisdom, you don't just open your mouth because of your feelings. Your instincts can be weird when you don't have the Holy Spirit. When you use your age to speak carefully. I know the Vaganda say that of Kadiamagas Tam Takubudi la Cham Kadiakuanga Tachi Mani. So my Bible yo java la baba kadava siru. Ava kolevi echi siru. Kasta yesu taba amu. Obu kadevu siru. I have seen old people with age. Ngataina magez. Ya sanga vya ayogera kubanga mkuru mumiaka. Ayogeze miaka. Atena kugambe guru siri ya wakuru. E guru ya wato. Katikula mpola mpola mina. Omkuru teyeto waza. Omkuru taba hambo. Chechorua chitebe tonda. I have heard some people say. Nga nkwe tonde la kochi, wabantu wabakuru vele tonda, guomwano mto goi no kwe tonda. The worldly standards. Mbo mkuru tasovia. Chechorachi wa mkuru wa igirizo mto, o kwe tonda. Ante nyonye mkuru ya igirizo nto kubuka mbo. Ono muigiriza wichi yota mani. Omu manya manisa. Omu genyi mugei. Those are words you use. I hear the words and I'm like, okay. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not reject the teaching of your mother. Everyone needs a father and a mother whom God has trained to raise a child. You need Christ in your heart to know how to raise your children right so that they will never walk away from your word. With a father, we hear the instruction. With a mother, it is a teaching. God gives instructions and mothers teach. Make sure the child learns. Jesus had parents.
open your Bibles in the book of First Corinthians. They give birth to that child. Now, after the Lord telling us in Isaiah, through Isaiah, what is going to happen, what, the shoot, what it comes with. The root of Jesse. The shoot can't appear if there is no root. God chose which root to use. He chose Jesse. Jesse comes from who? Do you know? They come from Shem. They are kids between Shem and Jesse. Because we have Noah. Noah gave birth to three kids. One was cursed. And it was the father's mistake. And probably he himself, he did not teach his child respect, honor. Because he got annoyed, he used his old age to curse his own child. And that is the same land where God sends Abraham. That land had issues. And Israel went back to the same land after the polluted ground. After being spent 400 years in prison. But that is a, the curse of a prison. They brought it upon themselves when they threw the keys, Joseph, out. Because he was taken as a prisoner. So it entered a legacy. And they tested it. So careful the things you do to other people's children. It becomes a legacy. And you're going to test it. Jacob and his children. Jacob did not test. His time was done and he left. But because of what his kids did, they tested the hand of a slave master. Because they themselves brought it upon themselves by their actions and their words. Because they never had the gift. They never had the gift of baby Jesus to get the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will say anything you want. Because Christ has never sat in your heart, you're using Christ as an excuse to get what you want. First Corinthians, what's the time? Your pastors have not told you they only use scriptures like touch not the anointed. And you're being cast east, left, right and center. The men God chose, the men who were given birth to as gifts, their, 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 their birth was so difficult. They've, the devil has been fighting them so bad. And everyone who has touched them is testing the medicine of their own words and actions. And you're also testing the very thing you made the other person go through. Who said an eye for an eye? You see, that you read the word of God, it's going to cut you. It's a double-edged sword. Careful when you're using it. Careful when you don't have Christ in your heart. Careful. You're choosing who to love. You don't know who's going to stand with your kids just in case.
the candle is blown up when it's not yet real time. You don't know who's going to stand in. You see that so-called circle of yours? They are doing things when you are there. When you leave, that is it. I use not to love people choosing me to be their friends. Because there are things I see in people and I want. And I always have something to bring on the table. I don't believe in a one-way traffic. I add value. I love value addition. I don't just talk about it. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments. In Matthew, the book of Luke, they talk about the birth of Christ. Matthew 2. They even give you the genealogy in the book of Matthew. But it all started in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is one prophet that talked so much about the coming of Christ. Because man had sinned so much. And God used prophets. To prophesy. And if we see that in the book of Matthew. The gospels. The gospel now gives birth to Christ. The New Testament. When I hear people say that you don't need the New Testament, I'm like, hmm. the New Testament comes from the Old Testament to take us back to the Garden of Eden. It has the keys to the Tree of Life. But you've never noticed that you have keys. Because your lifestyle is still in the Old Testament. When you start to choose who loves you, I look at you. And you're making the wrong choices. It is time to ask the Holy Spirit to break up camp. This Christmas, ask the Holy Spirit to break up the camp. Many of you have failed to work for God because of your circles. You love acquaintances. You're just a tag along. You love fixing yourself in a particular lifestyle. Some of you are working with people because of a class. And when I look at you, even when you're there, you still look poor because of your character. You're trying to fit so much to fit in because there is a life you never saw while growing up. Sorry. Because your parents did not teach you to use what you have. You'll be surprised how you have everything in the house. It is because you have no respect for God in your own house. How do I expect you to respect anyone outside? Charity begins at home. Who used that statement? I don't know. It's at home where they touch the morals. At school, these guys, whatever they find inside you, they just enhance it. So, if you come out with rotten morals, 
you're going to find a child who has power to ignite the rotten morals inside you. The urge will come out to drink alcohol because the shoot where it come from, alcohol is there. Even if your father's not taught you to drink it, it's at the shoot, the root, your root, because you're a shoot. Your root has alcohol. When you get out of your father's house, you're going to find someone who ignites the fire. Boys, your friends have taught you to sleep around. So that they enhance what's in your roots. Girls, the same story. Now you're all frustrated with love and relationships. Because you made the wrong shoot. You used the wrong ingredient when you left your parents' house. Because your parents did not teach you about Christ. They did not pay attention to your growth. They worked on you going to school and uh, dressing up. Those are the things they work upon. Because it's about giving you education, clothing you, giving you roof, food. That's it. Your spiritual life is none of their business. Because they themselves... Their spiritual life is struggling. You'll hear men saying, Ah, my father is not understanding those things. Your traditional religion, yeah. Back up, Bible. Now, but you know where is all. They have the fivefold ministry. I was like, hey. But was a no no, a no no chechi muluzungu. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit come? After they give birth to a baby, the baby grows. The baby grows and grows and grows. Excuse me. Then John baptizes the baby. At what age? For you in your church, they baptize you babies who don't understand a thing. Here in the Pentecostal setting, they present the child before the Lord when they are babies. Why? Because in sin, your mother conceived you. Jesus was not conceived through sin. It is pure. They chose a woman who comes from the Lion of Judah. When you follow her lineage, it comes from there. But she was a pure girl. It is us who are conceived through sin. The Bible calls it sin. Because when man sinned, His eyes opened, and the devil lied to him that God just hates you. He doesn't want you to know the truth. God was protecting you because you have a weak heart. That is why right now you're saying love is bad. Because they, they target the heart. Because that's where love sits. God sits in your heart. You chose to put that girl in your heart. Instead of God, you chose to put money in your heart. That is why when they steal it, you go 
haywired. You chose to put your business, your car, that car house, your so-called uh, green card, your so-called um, citizenship. It's in, all in your heart. That is why you think staying abroad, immigrants, you think it is so great. You call America heaven. Because your heart don't have Christ. Now about your spiritual, when you look at John 14, before I read that, John 14, the Bible says, I'll start from verse 12. You can go and read everything by yourself. I you see, when it's starting, the Bible says, Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. When you have Christ in your heart, you will not be afraid. Your heart won't be troubled. He will be in charge. Believe confidently in God and trust in Him. Have faith. Hold on to it. Rely on it. Keep going and believe also in. These were words that they talked about in the book of Isaiah. And in the book of John, they called Christ the Word. And the book of Hebrews says the Word is a double-edged sword. Then verses 12 of chapter 14, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me has Savior. Believing is done by the heart. will also do the things that I do and he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representative. Your representation matters if you call yourself a Christian. You have Christ for you to become a Christian. You have a Christian name. That means you have Christ. A name is an identity. You f should find your identity in the baby. It starts by being a baby. You love the baby. God allowed us to have babies, to relate. No one puts a baby in the womb. You don't know what happens inside. Science has tried here and there. Science is just helping you to understand how God operates. But it doesn't give you the right to be God. He gave you the wisdom. Representative, this I will do so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son that you're celebrating today. If you ask me anything in my name as my representative, I will do it. If you rely, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. That is the fear of God. Which come as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 
if you really love me okay verse 16 and i will ask the father and he will give you another helper comforter advocate intercessor counselor strengthener stand by to be with you forever when they were with christ he was everything but he needed to go so that you can also have it that is why you give birth give birth to your children and you give them a part of you 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 multiply moses multiplied 70 times they used the holy spirit to do that because whoever got what moses had was not his child Moses gave birth to children with a daughter of Jethro, a Midianite. And God did not qualify Moses' children. Because remember Moses ran away from the eyes of God. That wife was not from God. So careful when you're choosing a spouse. Counselor, strengthener, standby. All these things are inside the Holy Spirit like this. The Spirit of Counsel. If you went and started, studied counseling, please don't just use the scriptures and post them. Walk the talk. As a counselor, you need to have love for people. When I see counselors rejecting the word of God, I wonder what exactly they counsel. I wonder. Then I find you raising your hands and speaking in tongues. I'm like, hmm, what a show. Miracles, you're entitled. You're a child of God. Because he doesn't want you to steal. That is why you went to school and studied. So that you can get a job and he blesses the works of your hands. Because your blessing is not by birth. Yours comes when you work. your heart is not in line with the things of God as much as you proclaim the word of God. Your character has undressed you. Verses 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to his, its heart because it does not see him or know him but you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you I will not leave you as orphans comfortless bereaved and helpless I will come back to you after a little while the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live you will live also on that day when the time comes you will know for yourselves that I am a fa I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The person who has my commandments and keeps them in the one is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him. I love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. Judas is Iscariot. Judas, not Escalud, asked him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word, teaching, and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. One who does not really love me does not keep my words. What you're doing today, you're just remembering. 
all these things. So that you can renew your vows. If anything went wrong, this is the time you repent and confess Christ afresh. This is a time for you to renew your vows, to repent and turn away from your wicked ways. So that God will hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. This time is for repentancy. You're renewing your vows because it's a remembrance. You can continue and read about it. You'll find where he says, unless I go, the Holy Spirit can't come. Because now, when God saw that we needed help, he was going to lose humanity. He started sending. He cannot come himself. You cannot handle his presence. You cannot handle his power. When, when Adam sinned, he got so scared. Why was he scared? Because he had something to hide. That is why you complain a lot. Because you have something to hide. Sin brings that in your heart. You start hiding. Because you made a mistake. And you don't know how to correct it. That is why you need the baby. For remembrance. It started with a baby who grew to a level of dying for your sins. First Corinthians 12. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments. After the Holy Spirit comes, you're getting another set of gifts. In the Old Testament, they talked about it. Now you're having them when you confess your Christ in your heart. The Holy Spirit will come, sit inside, and whatever is inside is given birth to. And it will be sprouting. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed you know that when you were pagans you were led off after speechless idols however you were led off whether by impulse or habit therefore i want you to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the spirit of god can say jesus be cursed and no one can say jesus my lord is my lord except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit, which came after Jesus had gone. This day should remind you of such things, so that you can put your life in order. And be waiting, because he's coming back very soon. So that you're found worthy and ready in the right garment. It's through the power and influence that's what a gift does are you a gift you can only know that you have a gift when you understand the baby Jesus 
He started by being a baby. God humbled himself in form of a baby. Who are you not to humble yourself? It's because you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't understand the concept. Why the baby was given birth to? Because your own actions are saying something else. You choose who to love. You choose who to celebrate. You choose who to remember. You choose who to help. You choose who to care for. When people are in God's image, Esther, we cannot hold, help the whole world. When you team up, it's the fivefold ministries. It's a team with number six. It's a team with number six to make sure the five play the football right. They pass on the ball because each one of them plays a particular number. Do you play number five on the team? Hope you read the Bible. Verses 4 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. You know before you start operating in something, you need to know where it's coming from. Who gave it to you? Many of us have misused our gifts. Some of us are using our gifts to gain power and be on top of others. That is why no one t t tells you what to do. Because they are the one with the gift. My dear, God is not a respecter of men. He's the giver. Not your father. You know, some of you walk like as if going to the Bible college does not qualify you to step on anyone. Having a big church, it's the grace of God. Having a big church with poor quality, that means the fivefold ministries are not doing their work. And the so called as overseer. Now there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers, but it is the same Spirit who grants them and empowers believers. Some people think they're the ones that give us the gifts. So they want to control it. How do you control a gift? You did not give anyone. I've seen parents control their kids' gifts and I'm like, do you know that you're controlling God? And diverting God's work. Because you're used to owning God's work, the church is yours. When did it become yours? Togambo ako. Gwe musumbo muko. You know. Verses 5. And there are distinctive varieties of ministries and service. But it is the same Lord who is served. Some of you make us look like 
the God we are serving in these ends is not the same God you are serving. You make us look like God is only seated in your church. The Bible has said, and there are distinctive varieties of ministries and service, but it is the same Lord who is served. And there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things, but it is the same God who produces all things in all believers, inspiring, energizing, and empowering them. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, the spiritual illumination, and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak the message of wisdom. The five, the seven of them in Isaiah, it's within the shoot. Now the shoot comes, dies, goes, and sends the one who has what was inside him. So that we can share. Co-hairs. Sharing is caring. I see you only share with your small sack. You know the man who created that app. Played with us in an amazing way. He's, he's, uh, he's a genius. Those guys read the Bible as much as they don't follow it. When they are doing things. Kubanga guwa kolera ya tuteka munambe mu. Ayagalo tufugiromo. Ya kola community. Aso wolo tu controli ingirao. Aso wolo tu tuwalavuru unji muwanu wadu oda. Nga tukirizo manyo kugenda ya for free. Tumuku nganyi za avantu. Netuko rieting a content. Na atu sasura. Because Yamanya, but time is money. Kombe, you're destroying, they are destroying us. Yeah, I'm going to go back to Yambo, take it again, Jogera Katokit, Jogera Rudich. Yakola chin to che. Kati gwenola wanga yangu jize wintu. Osa ulo kwa 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 e Canada. Neja jao e Stockholm e Sweden. You can talk to your judge in German. You can talk to your judge in the Norway. You know. You can communicate to Australia. They were creating a community. So that if we to anga to kill every day in revelations in Mukaga Mukaga, it becomes easy. Gate yet a gasika mugua. Because already a mwa good dama tu. I chifuna chivamu send. You adhere to his rules and regulations for you to keep the account. Verses 8 to 1 is given the Spirit through the Holy Spirit the power to speak the message of wisdom and to another the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Spirit. To another wonder-working faith is given by the same Holy Spirit and to another the extraordinary gifts of healings by the one spirit and to another the working of miracles <laughs> let me go back to another verse 9 to another wonder working faith is given by the same holy spirit to another extraordinary gifts of healing by the one spirit and to another the working of miracles and to another prophecy foretelling the future speaking a new message from God to people, to another discernment of spirits, the ability to distinguish sound, 
godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults, and to another various kinds of unknown tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. All these things, the gifts, the achievements, the abilities, the empowering, are brought about by one, the same Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually, just as he chooses. Let me check for something. I'm looking for something here. There's a word I am looking for that is very specific. leave what I was looking for. This baby was given birth to for us to be released out of prison. Remember, uh, if you remember something I left you some time back, the main purpose for this baby as a gift was for us to be released out of prison because of what he came with. He's a gift. I left you something where I talked about Chitalia, Uganda prison, in bracket, Paul and Silas, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 14, close the bracket, yellow uniform. You know yellow represents love. And why they give it to you as a prisoner, I don't know. Uniforms, 18 years to 100, 7 to 17, juvenile. The word juvenile has the word Nile. And we have the river Nile, the source is in Uganda. And we call that prison, camping so for the children. You start as a child and you live as an old man or old woman, depending on your offenses, depending on why you were got and taken to prison. And it's only the baby Jesus that can help you come out of that prison when you're whole. Many people come out of prison when they're mentally disturbed. They are broken. And it's only Christ who can take away that. Prison leaves you with a particular mindset. It brings hatred. You look a loser. It wastes time. And that is your life. You need the five to get out of prison. You need the bishop, the higher power, the rank. The five have to perfect you. Because when you get out of prison, they start to nurture you. They train you. They comfort you. They visit you. They make sure you're comfortable. They make sure the love of God is given a rebirth in your heart through their actions. And the overseer makes sure everything is done according to the book. Then they give, they, they remove the prisoner, uh, 
garment. Then after that, they nurture the gifts inside you. They teach you. They talk about Christ and you give your life to Christ and everything inside of you, the seven gifts of God, from God, the nine spiritual gifts, then you get the fruits. Then your talents. That's what the baby, the gift comes with. Most of you come in people's lives and you just send people to prison. You use your mouth to take people to prison. You imprison people by using your mouth. Joseph was imprisoned because of a mouth. And God used his gifts for him to get out of prison. Because he carried the gifts. He was a gift to Jacob. God remembered Rachel. When God remembers covenants, he presents you with a gift. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of glory, King of mercy, I worship you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I thank you for this precious time. Lord, I pray that we understand the gift, the baby Jesus, that you sent us to take us back to the Garden of Eden, where the tree of life is, because it gives us access. Through Christ we get access again that sin had taken away. Through sin, access to the Holy of Holies was cut off. But through Jesus, we gain the access again. Holy Spirit, help us do the right thing. Help us walk right. Help us understand why you humbled yourself and came down as a human being through a baby. Through that we should understand how humility works. Because humility is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't have humility, but we can teach about it. We fail to walk the talk, and things are continuing to be bad. Because we don't obey instructions. Because we don't have the fear of God in our hearts. We miss that gift. Because Christ has never sat in the heart but checks the heart. Lord help us. Thank you so much for coming into our lives. And making a way where there seems to be no way. I give you praise Lord. I give you glory. I thank you for Job. He's represented humanity out there. Speak to your people, Lord. Speak to your people. I'm just a vessel to blow the trumpet. I thank you for the opportunity. I worship you. I glorify your name. I am so honored and humbled, Lord, for such a time as this. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I cover Uganda in the blood of Jesus. My blood family, my church family, my school family, my work family, the family in the U.S., humanity at large, I cover them in the blood of Jesus. No man or woman or spirit that is not approved of you will find us anywhere. Hide us, Lord. Let us go invisible, King of glory. Let us go invisible for the devil not to see us. Blind him, Lord. 
we are ready to do what is right. Obedience is part of the equation. Without it, we are nothing. Heal every man who is sick and woman and child. Heal them from the crown of their head. Let Jesus be born again into their lives. Help us renew our vows, Lord, for the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe and pray. Amen. I'll see you around. Enjoy your festive season with your family members. Drive carefully. Don't drink and drive. Let's do what is right. And God is going to remember us. God is a God of a covenant. And he's a God who keeps his covenant. He keeps his word. Man breaks the word. But God never breaks his word. Men who have kept their words, Jesus sat in their hearts and he does not leave. Those are men that remember. And a man or woman who remembers, a human being who remembers gives thanks. A human being who remembers forgives. They are humble. They ask for forgiveness. And they turn away from their wicked ways. But a man or woman who does not have the baby in the heart, when you mention the sin they do, you're judging. May the Lord help us all. 2023 has greatness. But it's only for men and women who are wearing their army uniform right. It's for men and women who are willing to work together as a team. For the glory of God. Have a blessed night. I sign out. See you when I see you. When I'm alive, I go live.